Hello, my name is Bruce Swanson and I'm a technical marketing engineer at Mentor Graphics. In this video session, I'd like to show you how to use Tessent Memory Bist and specifically the DFT Visualizer tool to implement and make edits to your DFT specification. The main steps for implementing Memory Bist solution in your design are shown on the right hand side. First the design is loaded and then you specify what it is that you want to create and then the tool automatically creates the DFT specification. And this specification defines the DFT elements or components to implement for the design, such as memory BIST and the memory visor controllers. Before we would do the next step, which is processing the DFT specification, we can use DFT Visualizer tool to make edits within the DFT specification. We can add or delete items, we can move them, and we can set and change values. Once we have done that, we can go on to process the DFT specification where the tool implements the specified elements and inserts them into the design. I'd like to actually show you how this works within the tool. So on the left hand side I have a shell where I've just invoked test and shell. And on the right hand side I have a series of commands and do file. And I'm going to simply copy and paste those into the test and shell and get those running. So the first step, what we want to do, is actually load the design details and files. So that starts by reading the library file and the actual design, the Verilog design. Next, we have a UPF file, which contains the power information, such as power domains and power islands for the design. Following that, we have a def file. The def file includes a physical location so that the tool can automatically combine that with the knowledge it has of the design and the power configuration to figure out how best to implement DFT controllers for your memory BIST. In step two, we're simply reporting on the memory instances that the tool has found. In this case, there are 18 different memories found in three different levels of hierarchy. In step three, we will set our DFT specification. So we set the level of the design, which in this case is a sub-block, and then we set DFT specification in this case, we're saying memory test on, which will if it automatically finds repairable memories. It will also add a memory visor controller. And step four is to actually create the DFT specification and then report on it. So you can see the structure here of the specification. And it looks like there are five controllers. But you may know that you want to make some custom edits to this basic specification created automatically by the tool. So I'm invoking DFT Visualizer. Now that we have the DFT Visualizer tool open, let's go ahead and make it a little bit wider here. And we can actually collapse this browser window on the left since we won't be needing it. In the configuration data window, now you can see we have the DFT specification. And if I expand these out by clicking on the little plus signs, you can see there are five memory BIS controllers. And I'll expand these down a little bit more. So you can see some controllers, such as C1, have multiple steps and different memories within those steps. So what this means is that these memories can be run in three different steps. They need to be done sequentially. Versus, for example, in controller C5, all of these memories are done in one step and so those are run in parallel. Uh, to further cl clarify, in, within any given step, um, the memories are run in parallel. So in, case, in this case, one, two, and three are run in parallel, but then in a separate step, memories four and five will be run. So let's go ahead and start making some edits and show you how that works. For any given item here on the left, like a memory, or a step, or a controller, you can see options appearing on the right hand side as each of those are selected. And within here you'll see different texts. You will see some gray text and you'll see a black text. If it is gray that means that it is the default value and if it is black text it is something that the tool automatically figured out from your design files or that was entered by the user. In this case we define our clock as CLKA. For any of these options here if you look, click on the right hand down arrow, you can see the available options and values available for that particular setting. 
If I change one of the settings, in this case, you can see that it turned to a black 3. If you wanted to make that change, you click the Apply button here at the bottom. But since I don't really want to make that change, I'm just going to cancel that. And you see it returns to its default value. So let's go ahead and make some real design edits now. Uh, let's go ahead and add a new controller. So if we right click on the memory bus line, we can see Add Controller. And you can see now controller C6 appears at the bottom. I'm going to have a, add a step, test step here. So I click on the C6 controller and say Add Step. And then I actually want to move a memory from controller 1, memory 3 here. I want to move it into this new step in controller C6. It's very simple as a drag and drop operation. So I select it, my left mouse button down, and drag it and release on that step in controller C6. And there you see it has been moved. I also want to add one more step in controller C6. So I would add that one as well. And then I want to move the memory from controller C3 into this new step I just created. So you see that is now there. Uh, controller C3 is no longer needed actually, so I'm going to right click on that and simply delete it. Other editing things you can do here, for example, if we want to uh, reorder some steps. So let me expand this, these top three steps in controller C1. And if I say I want to move step 2 up to the, to the top and run it first, I can right click and say move up and see it moved up one, one level. And if I right click again, I can say move up again. And now it is up at the top. And what used to be step 0 is now moved down to step 1. And likewise, what was step 1 is now step 2. So go ahead and click on any of these and you can see the options here. So you can move up or down depending on its current location. You can copy and paste and cut. You can collapse. You can add and delete. Uh, one thing I forgot to do when I will show you how is back in controller C6 we didn't define the clock. So I just simply click on it on the left hand side and then in the right hand side over here I can type in CLKA. So that's it for this short demonstration. I hope you now understand how easy it is to edit your DFT specification within the DFT Visualizer tool. If you have any questions, please contact your local Mentor Graphics representative. Thank you, and have a great day.